So let me get to the real. I think I'm the dumbest person in the world. Well, after this video, I think you might prove it. So, um, this is the latest venture from Eric July and the Ripperverse, known as simply Ripper Send. Ah, so he's Owner become a logistics mogul. Yes. Of the Ripperverse. When we launched our comic book company in 2022, I took the risk of my life, but it wasn't an uneducated risk. We've had three campaigns over a million dollars, and that's due to us doing tons of research. A lot of that research had to do with analyzing the industry standards from content to distribution. And quite frankly, we couldn't make sense of a lot of it. So we did things differently. We handled everything ourselves as a new company from the website functionality to the fulfillment. All of it was in-house and we've learned a lot along the way. We know what works and we know what doesn't. And we are not afraid of change. And why is that guy still waiting for his <coughs> eyes on the hair? Yeah, right. A couple weeks ago? <laughs> that black guy from the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's still black. waiting. He's like, we learned a lot. None of it about the actual making of comic books. Right. Is that not, that feels like that's a little telling. Right? I'll, give you a, I'll give you a theory too. I think he's doing the shipping move just so he can keep just so he can just fight and pay for his fucking warehouse because he wants to have a fucking warehouse with his big table that he likes to sit in. Yeah. So here here's the the options as far as I see them, right? Either whoever gave him money to start all this is demanding he do this so that they can make a return. Or they're hemorrhaging money so bad that they might have to shut down soon if if they don't do something. When I say soon, I mean like within like a year or so. Like that's soon in business terms. Oh, keeping the warehouse. Mm -hmm. That definitely puts uh, an expiry well, date because he, it's expensive he's got as fuck. A five year lease, Kyle. If he if he gets kicked out of the warehouse, he's on the hook for the rest of that lease. He still has to Ooh. pay that. So that yeah, that's why he has to do this. Doesn't matter, it has to do it because mm -hmm. the other shit's not. What a stupid man is fucking warehouse. If you've kept up with my videos, right. you know that many people ask me if we'll ever publish non reverse things. <laughs> Evie Variety would have asked this ask question several months. I was wondering if the answer changed. Are you interested in bringing uh, on outside series to the Riververse? I've always said that I believe our. The part he just clipped out was him going, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. And the then party... money ran out, and I went maybe. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I never bring on outside. If like if we were going to like release something of someone, they'd have to be in our universe and shit. What's wrong with his teeth? Is he missing a tooth? Um, I think it's just he's got what I call Adam Kessler syndrome, where he has to talk with his head back like this. Hi, welcome to X-Play, guys. It's me, Adam Kessler. Would you like to learn about a video game? It's like, why am I looking at your fucking neck? Our contribution would be more so in helping fulfill because it's the most pressing issue. And now that we have everything down, I'm... Pr you know the real reason he's probably doing it? He's afraid of double chin. Eric, you have a fucking beard, retard. That's what beards are for, is to cover your goddamn fucking double chin. Yeah, I don't have that option. Like, when you hold your head up like this, have, like, it pulls the skin that. back, and he can give you a more defined jawline. He doesn't have a jawline! He probably started doing that before he grew the beard out. Hmm, I'm wondering. Proud so to announce our next- Have y'all seen the inside of a fucking Amazon warehouse? And how many robots and shit are in yeah, there? Yeah, it's fucking massive. How is this motherfucker gonna compete even close? He's not, because he he's, might. Not, he's not even going to be doing the actual delivery. See, he's not going to compete with Amazon because he's not going to be mailing anything. The only thing he's really going to be doing is taking gonna... in all the products that people are going to try to sell for their, like, shit, and then yeah, it's driving shipping. them to the mail, or the fucking post office. Yeah, it's probably like he's going to get his from production. He's gonna meet old man. Yeah. For He's a gonna cut get it from the their, printing company. For a cut of their fucking profit, too. Exactly. It's just basically uh, storage space. Which, I, we've seen the size of the, the warehouse. We've seen how many people he has working in. Mm -hmm. He might think he has 
space outside of his own products, but well, that two or three clients empty, in. So kind of does. Mm, I don't know, man. If especially if he's gonna expand his online products, I think two or three clients, and he's gonna be overwhelmed. People are gonna be. Yeah. He's he's uh, delaying deliveries now for his own product. Well, no, he's not even delaying. Del he's okay. I was, uh, I saw him and Az went uh, live earlier. And I, I jumped in for like a moment to, you know, uh, put in the chat. Um, nothing is safe. Nothing is sacred. And I just left. And it, it, they started immediately talking about this shit. And he was like, oh, uh, you know, we, we're going to take a, we're going to, we're going to start with creators and we're going to, we're going to basically streamline all this shit for him. And it's going to be, it's going to be great. And like, like, are you, like, nervous? Like, why do you jump into this, like, first? Like, nobody even asked you about it. Look, I'll give him credit. Oh, uh, not credit, but I'll give him, like, a... A, a benefit a way of the doubt? This. Maybe, benefit of the doubt. Maybe he pivots his stuff into being just a leech on the comic books market, which might enable other better comics to do the shit. You know, he maybe he knows the printing company because yeah. he already did his own shit, and he probably a cheap ass motherfucker mm -hmm. find, found the cheapest place. So he knows the printing company. He has a storage space. He has probably a. He doesn't drive the shit. He has a contracts with whatever provider, whatever. Company he uses, they show up once a day, once a week, or whatever. Well, that's why he get has so he, they drive it to the post Maybe office. he becomes a leech and use a useful leech for better comic book artists to launch their shit. And he starts, you know, he doesn't try to do a bunch well, more see, shit. He went from grifting his audience until the point where they're tapped out, or like 70% of the people that gave him money the first time are not giving him money again. And nobody knew it was coming in. So now he's switching from grifting the audience to now he's going to grift other creators. Yep. I mean, I'll give him like, it's a, you know, it's a nice little piece of uh mild evil genius. You know, I won't even give him like full evil. Genius. Like it's, it's like a 70%. Yeah. Like Adventure called. Yeah. He's, he's just going to fucking, he, He's doing it. He's already started doing it to one of his friends. Here, I've got a. Where is it? Here it is. So I don't know if you guys know who uh, Drunk Three PO is. Uh, he's one of their their buddies at in uh, Geeks and Gamers. He's friends with Gina Carano. He's always like taking selfies with her when they're out of places and like posting it online. Ooh, look at me! I'm so cool. I'm with Gina Carano. No one gives a fuck, dude. By the way, I saw a thumbnail for like something that Gina Carano did recently. I think it was something on the Blaze or whatever. She looking, she not looking Hollywood anymore. Did anyone see fat. it? She looking dumpy as fuck. Yeah, she's looking yeah, fat. she's she, she gained a lot of weight. Looking, yeah, she she's got money almost for those rosy, Hollywood trainers, bro. I mean, she always has a pretty face, but yeah, she's she's bigger now. That's why she wears like those big ponchos and stuff. You ever noticed? Yeah, the way she yeah, she down? hiding. Yeah, yeah. All right, so their first Ripperson creator is Jay David, aka Drunk Three PO. His first book, uh, Acromatic Chronicles Blue, was a massive hundred thousand dollar crowdfunding success. They're about to do the next installment, Green. Huh? This is weird. No, but look at the text there because it's exactly what I was saying. He's gonna be a publisher. It's not a shipping company. And that's why he like, why don't you fucking name it properly? He just said it on the, the tweet. We're going to yeah, publish yeah, yeah. it. Publish is, that is exactly what I say. He's going to know the guy who prints it, know the fucking whatever, have started space. Well, so why I, call I, it I think Ripper he's Sand? misusing the term publishing because they are they don't print anything. But it right? no, doesn't matter. Marvel doesn't print anything. They publish from yeah, but companies. publishing means like I guess that you're so, so, so he's doing Stanley. okay, so he's gonna be doing these campaigns and everything through them. Okay, so I guess you could consider that publishing. No, but even if it, it doesn't do all the marketing, matter. even if the creator has to do some of the marketing, it is publishing what he's doing, and because it's not sending. Can I uh, 
Can I have guitar amplifiers delivered, Eric? No, it's not a sending <laughs> sending company. It's a publisher. Well, they're gonna do like merch and shit too. It's like all the shit that these people are would make for their little campaigns and shit. They're gonna basically store and deliver, or take to the post office. Yeah, but do you think Eric's gonna? That's what I'm saying. Anyone who's gonna work with Eric, mm -hmm. trust what I'm saying, has to use his. Dude, he's doing one of my first... I just realized he's doing one of my first jobs in the printing, which was going to to uh, business, mm -hmm. uh, sell them, like, uh, business cards, flyers, whatever they need printed, and I would make it on a computer. I knew the printing places who, which would give me, like, a 20%, 30% discount for me being, a, like, a reseller mm -hmm. and doing some of the work, like, the computer work and all that. And I would sell that way. I would, but I knew the and the and the guys on those printing companies. They would offer me because I was bringing them jobs and all that. So Eric's moral of the story. Eric's gonna use his buddy or whatever his uh, printing company. He's gonna use his merch company. You know what I'm saying? Because he, yeah. he he built relations with those companies, mm -hmm. and he probably those guys were like, "Dude, if you bring me more though, marks to like, do this," I honestly would be surprised either direction if he did have the requirements where like you have to use my people, or if he just like let them do whatever. Because he's lazy enough to where he's just like, "I don't know, you figure it out." <laughs> he's that fucking lazy and incompetent. So it's like I don't I don't think. It would be very surprising if he, if he was like like literally just holding shit and, and moving it. Like just, right, but maybe maybe he's good at that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's good at that. And then maybe. better comics are we'll going to flourish out of that. I just think that this, this is kind of the precursor to him no longer doing comic books. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Which honestly might be better for him. Yeah. Like you're, you're not a creative. You're barely able to speak. <laughs> like you're exactly no he's good at, at at some sort of like creating the business you can see that he, he created the business even the oh. warehouse as much as we criticize it there's a lot of paperwork and business mm -hmm. and accounting that has to go into that maybe he's good at that the libertarian they like the economics maybe. it's all about economics so maybe that's his talent i just know there's a there's a <laughs> uh, a trend of people who are really good at getting other people to do the shit for them. You know what I mean? You know what I want to say, but it's I probably want to clip it for this. So I don't want to say what Eric, what tribe Eric is emulating, but for comics. <laughs> <laughs> so I, this just caught my eye a second ago. This is Jay's, like the cover of Jay's comic book. Anything odd about this to you? No. It's a black girl. Yeah. For these people, that's kind of odd, isn't it? Because they're always bitching about diversity and all that shit. Like it, it I don't think that's the standard. Like they're Does it feed the star? Full of shit. What it's is that? The, I mean, it's a it's a green ball. I don't know. They're in a black and white world. Okay, that's the comic right? that. Yeah, that's the comic yeah. book that he made. Mm -hmm. He's published. That is going to be Eric's first third party comic he's gonna make i don't know that cover seems half-assed as fuck it does it's it looks like shit yeah kind of makes me want to read these so we can fucking rip them apart because i don't think this guy probably would have very good comic book i've never seen an appearance of him anywhere that made me go oh this guy's interesting he's wearing a cross <laughs> yeah like the sasuke scissors so yeah, I, don't know, I just think he's gonna be grifting off his own. Ripperson, a full-scale hosting and fulfillment service under the Ripperverse Publishing brand. A hosting? You mean a place to put your shit? Story space. Most of the places you would you would do like use to like make your comic books would already have like warehouses to store it until it's sent directly to the customer. You, there's no reason to have another person involved. With any of this. This is dumb. This there is, like, is really dumb. Reaper for publishing. Mm-hmm. See, in that clip just a minute ago, let me see if I can f find the actual original clip. 
I believe a member who posted it. I believe it was Chris Bacon, which I've seen Chris Bacon in here a couple of times before. I didn't know this at the time, mm-hmm. but he uh, actually lives like right down the street from Eric July. And uh, was one of his like biggest like sponsors Marks. for a while. Let's see. Here it is. So here's the here's the full clip. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Evie Variety would have asked this question several months. I was wondering if the answer changed. Are you interested in bringing uh, on outside series to the Riververse? That's where he cut it in the promo, right? Um, no. I, 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 I... <laughs> you fucking lying piece of shit. Just kidding, yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Dude, this was like a couple days ago. I think. I, I might be wrong. I don't know. Sometimes I get... That's for, for Ken's sake, so it's hard to tell. Yeah, it had to be pretty recent. I can give is he... Does he mean in the Reaperverse? When he's answering that, like, his Reaperverse, his well, universe... Yeah. And, and then he's like, no, actually, I can make money out of it. So, but let me just do a publishing yeah, side. Well, I'll play more of the clip and you can hear for yourself. Like, it's not for the Ripperverse. If I start a different venture that, you know, works with okay, that's, outsiders, that's exactly if you will, said. yes, that, that may, you know, who, who knows. But you My gotta God, remember. That was like the, the inception of bad clipping. <laughs> it was what the, he clipped like the smallest part you mm-hmm. clipped a little bit more mm-hmm. that still doesn't give the cut, yep. and then the full thing says well, he's like, it, that's it's hilarious. almost like he's ha- he, like he got the idea right here right there right yeah there. like he, like he <laughs> technically wasn't lying until he kept talking do, do you have a cachin oh, no. sound effect but you Shing. gotta remember um I have a No, that doesn't work. If it's under like our, our, our brand and it's being released through us as as it exists right now, then it needs to be a part of our universe. Okay. <laughs> He's full of shit. <laughs> He's absolutely full of shit. One hundred percent, undoubted, full of shit. Is is Anachromic Chronicles or whatever the fuck it's called part of your Ripperverse? Because you said right here, if you're going to publish it, it has to be. I don't understand. We're going to need some uh, clarification. I see here, what Eric. he's saying. It's done, but it's like there's the Ripperverse, the universe. Mm hmm. And then he got the idea okay, let me. Actually, I could do a side thing. Which is not inside the Reaperverse, not canon, it's not part of the fictional universe or the mm. Reaperverse or whatever. But I can. It's it was very opportunistic. Yeah, um, but essentially, then you're just a drop shipper. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's all. all he, that's, that's the, all the business doing. he actually built. <laughs> that's, he yeah, didn't actually I'm build a comic you, book company. Not, He's not saying it because it's all like depending on who it is. He's he negotiates. He sees what they already maybe someone's already doing in China, and then he's just gonna receive it and take it from there. But I'm telling you, most of it he's gonna get a lot of money back from using the companies he already has dealing with. I mean, that, if bringing, he did that, that would be shipping. a good business decision for him. But it would kind of be shitty to the people he's trying to make clients. Hey, Tilt, uh, look at the back bar real quick. I just want to show, like, what warehouse type shit he's up against. All right. To 200,000 robots operating within these warehouses. Amazon refers to its robots as... That's a big-ass warehouse. That's what he's up against. He's got this fucking piddly little-ass bullshit warehouse. Yep. Yep. No, but that's what I I was saying from you. That's why I don't think it's about the... the the shipping and sending itself is more about being the middleman between the things he already has dealing with and if you know that if you ever did business you any any company will give you 15 20 percent 25 percent back when you bring more business if you have a dealing with them and you give you bring in a bunch of like Mm. uh, referring business 
Brock the Caswell says, time to fight woke QPS. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to culture war in a shipping business, you fucking moron? So, yeah. will people... <laughs> the post office wants your children to be gay. I don't care what the post office wants. Who fucking talks to them? Bull. Will people... See, this is what... Uh... This is where I was like, oh, this is just a grift on his on his fucking fellow, like, smaller creators. This guy just gifted $10 says, you have more clout than me. I prefer to just give the books to you. If you put it on your site, one of my books, you'd get way more money. I'll send an email with pics and stuff to give you a better view. Like, this is the only reason why he's doing this is because people like this guy, whoever Big Doc is, have been just begging to give him money for this shit. Yeah, there's that. He created a a surrounding, but the, here's the the problem. Mm -hmm. There is a market for handling all of this bureaucratic process of producing sure. whatever. But there's already companies book. that have done it longer and are better at it. Uh, where where are they? I mean, anyway, I'm not a comic book creator, and, but I've heard them talk about them. And they've okay. been around for a long anyway, time. Anyway, there's a market. There's yeah. a market. I highly doubt that Eric July can be a timely and efficient. Yeah, I don't think he'll be able to compete man. with them. Doing what doing what he does, fucking live streams every day and mm -hmm. being all about his ego and all of that. That's a business you gotta fucking dive your head in and have your shit together. Because it's just gonna be that guy complaining about not getting eyes on for two weeks. But for all of his fucking clients and all that shit. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah, he just keeps jumping into industries he knows nothing about and is not qualified to even participate in. Robots, bro. Robots. Pitch ideas. Robots. Right? Like Chuck did. And we have an unannounced Chuck Dixon project where he's like, I'm thinking something like this. Yeah. And now that becomes part of the Ripperverse, though. Like, it's not like just Chuck's own thing, right? It's, uh... See, this this must have been before Horseman, then. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all that. All right, let's finish this fucking video. We got, like, a minute into it. hole in the independent comics market is with fulfillment and delivery of product. New forms of funding, such as crowdfunding, have lowered the barrier for entry, and that's great. The downside is that you have a lot of people that don't necessarily understand the business. Overpromising and realizing. <laughs> you notice he enunciated the word business this time, so we call it business. <laughs> Very quickly that they're in over their heads, and that's where Ripperson comes in. There are publishers and distributors, but what we're trying to do is far different. We understand the comic book industry and can handle any volume. Our goal is to assist the independent scene and those creatives that want to remain largely independent and sell directly to their customers. Also, if you want to read the assets for your book, comic books, we have it. You want pickup trucks, you got buildings for the background. Did you ever hear what the website those assets were from were called, Kyle? Sketch, sketch fed. The website they were from, I think it was called like 3dwarehouse.com. 3D Warehouse, yeah. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it's all for sketch. It's not a crowd. Like a toddler's 3D. He's probably the one who found the website. It's like, no, yeah, use the ones from here. I like this one. I like this one the most. <laughs> Why? I don't, I don't know. Just I don't know. something about it. It's because it's funny. Platform. And very low quality. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's from a website with the word warehouse in the title. Mm. He's obsessed with fucking warehouses. Form that's open to the public. Look at it more like a network that certain clients will have access to. You'd fill out our application online. We'd make sure that this is something that makes sense for you. And then we'd give you a unique quote with pricing that's tailored to you and your needs. Each client will be different which is why we'll work with select people or companies. There are two different primary types of clients that Ripasend is going to be perfect for. Number one, you're a great- The kind that are dumb and are willing to give us their money. <laughs> <laughs> and two, the kind that Girl are- that is dumb and is willing to give her money. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
creative, perhaps you've built a decent following, but the business and fulfillment side is difficult to understand or it bores you and you don't want to deal with it. You just want to create. Ripasend can take care of that entire project. We'll give you your own unique URL on our site oh, and shit. you can even have the Haven't campaign. I call it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah format where your customers can purchase. We'll keep you up to date with detailed reports and all and the clients that want us to take. Let us deal with all the logistics so we can easily steal your money and you not know how much money you actually supposed to be making and we can just take whatever the fuck we want. This is super yeah. basic bitch shit. Mm -hmm. There's companies that have been doing this for years in almost every industry. It's not even that. It's the, the problem. It's not hard. And he could make this, like, make a bunch of money and actually launch a bunch of cool products. But he has shown no such capabilities so far. I mean, I don't really know what capabilities he's shown except for how to look at where doing his views, how, which ones he got views on, and then just kept doing that. Yeah, that's what everybody does. And his shoulder hair. <laughs> Dude, he's even, Dude. like, even the, sh the fucking ones where... He's not wearing a sleeveless shirt. He still has right to right here. Has to <laughs> wear something that shows it off. I don't want no little hair on the man. It's disgusting. There's something that's too oh, much. That's a lot. Take care of everything. We'll get access to our internal team, which can assist you with other things, such as pricing your items and ensuring that you get the largest return. You're also going to be able to utilize our vendors and suppliers. So if you need help getting Bam, a book suppliers. printed or you want to get a shirt, we Boom, can take care of crazy. that for you. Boom. You're going to be mm -hmm. able to take advantage of some Ripperverse pricing, which is going to be far cheaper than if you did it yourself. Boom. Call it the, the discount he has you with the printing Kyle, companies. Holy Kyle, shit, I'm a businessman. I will man. give you that one. You did call it. I did it as a, my first business when I was like mm -hmm. 16. I was doing what he does, dude, for business, restaurants, yeah. bunch of shit. Yeah, it's very basic, bitch. I mean, he really, it's just, it's just a basic kind of, like, you're not even like a source business. You're a middleman business. Like, that's the worst mm. kind of business to be in. I would say nothing wrong with that. It depends no, on... No, there's nothing wrong with it. He he's able to do it, but he's not even able to do for his baby. His yeah. baby. I, I want to see where what happens with his clients. And this is just the perfect freeze frame. Jesus Christ. I was going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm right. here to lie. Would you like to give me a comic book so let me sell them for you? My guy just busted a mean nut. <laughs> especially with shipping and of course once your items are ready we'll receive them at one of our warehouse locations store prepackage and then ship to our customers and that means we'll be handling the customer service aspect of it for you too the other main type of client would be someone that just wants to use ripasend to host their store and fulfill their items we can do that too of course, there will be those hybrid clients as everybody needs something different. And that's the point. Our main requirement is that we'll only pick up projects where the company or individual creative has their stuff together. They need to be well so, beyond the- He knows, anyhow, he knows that there, like he's already had people, like probably hundreds of people say, hey man, let me just put my book on your site and like, we'll both make a ton of money. Okay, yeah, superficially, there's that. There's mm -hmm. uh, superficially is of oh, quality, at least have some quality standards. No, 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 no. Translation is we only gonna pick projects that are gonna pick our, our suppliers, they're gonna use our transport, they're gonna use our shit, they're or, gonna do it through Kyle, our means. Kyle, I think you're thinking too much like a business person. You gotta think more like a YouTuber. Or they're only gonna pick, he's only gonna pick his friends. All of that at the same time. At least Maybe. Could be for something. his head, what is quality or he agreed. It's not even quality. He's publishing that. That comic we just saw is a hunk of shit. The cover is a hunk of shit. Mm -hmm. He at least could pay a fiver to do a better cover. So it's not about quality. It's about people who agree with him, who are from his circle, that and going to use his chain of stuff. I think he might even kind of do what YouTube does, where he's going to, he's going to like, 
grift off the bigger names that he, he knows and then are friendly with him. Like, tr maybe Drinker, maybe Gary from Nerdrotic will fucking make a comic book. Maybe Az will make a comic book and they'll all do it through Ripperverse. And then at the same time, he's getting oh. these fucking little, little creators that ain't got much of an audience coming in and he's just ripping them off fucking hand over fist. He should hire me. I need a job. I could make him a character. Tell us you need to start making sleeper. comics. I could make him a super uh, a superhero lady. She's gonna have long eyelashes, and that's how she flies. Is her lashes? <laughs> See, that's so dumb. He'd actually like it, probably. <laughs> She's bald, and her power is she pile drives all men in the dick. Just pile drives right to the head. Pile drive. That's a good idea. I remember back when like all this first started. Uh, Greg made uh, like some AI art of a, a doctor with lobster hands and sent it to Dick Masterson yeah. and was like, hey, would you uh, review my comic of the lobster man? <laughs> He's like, sure, send me a PDF. <laughs> Proof of concept phase. Being a part of the Ripper Send network is going to benefit a lot of clients. Yes, all of the clients. Should I message him and be like, hey, listen, I know and I have some few ideas for, you know, new characters and stuff. Uh, would you like to toast it, toast it. know about you it? Should, you should, act, you know, this would be kind of fun. This would be like kind of an interesting thing that we could use as an exclusive, right? Okay, so on your first email, Toast, or mm -hmm. whatever, you mentioned that you were a big fan of the Soska sisters. Mm -hmm. And make sure mm -hmm. it's like an email, that a Gmail that has your profile picture. So mm -hmm. they can already start simping. From the gaggle. Hmm. That's a plan. I'm gonna do that. Let's see what they say. Clients, actually, because at minimum, I think it'd be kind of cool if we if we I mean, we got Ray because Ray's in Texas, right? I'm sure he's not terribly close to Dallas, but you know he could drive. We just need him to go through like a dr a job interview, All right? We need we need Ray. To try to get a job at the Ripperverse warehouse and go through the interview and take like a hidden camera. <laughs> James O'Keefe. Yes, the, the, we, the need, we need a fucking inside <laughs> video from the Ripperverse. I want to hear what questions they have to ask somebody when they're trying to hire them. The purchaser is going to understand that they are going to get the products that they paid for, and it will be within a reasonable time frame. This is why Ripasend won't be for everybody. We want the independent and alternative scenes to thrive, so Instance we're not says, here to Dallas, hold our sorry. clients. I mean, would you go on a date with Eric July wearing a, a hidden webcam? A hidden webcam. <laughs> you didn't go on a date. You go to like apply for a job. <laughs> Go for the job interview, you know, maybe towards the end of the interview, because you're not going to take, unless, unless you could fucking take the job and then we could like get more footage from the incident. He says no. So. No, 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 you, you're thinking, you're thinking too low. Get into the, his inner circle. Get, <laughs> get, 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 be friends with him and go to a and d game wearing a camera. Man, if only Imagine. there was a, uh, a cartoon gorilla who, who could make friends very easily and has been missing for a while that could uh, rise from the ashes and befriend Eric July. Dun, dun, dun. You know what? I'm, I think I'm going to start sketching out my uh, superheroes to send to him. Yeah. <laughs> you should. You should. You should color Definitely. it. Really, like, like really go hard on it hostage this is why even though in the literal sense we'd be publishing other people's like, how funny would it be to get like emails with like videos in it and we start playing it and we just hear greg's voice talking to eric <laughs> hey i'm here for a job i like working warehouses <laughs> pretty great work okay, well, i don't think I have, a, I have the idea for your comic your your heroine her mission is to shave all men's uh shoulders that's too obvious kyle it's too it's too fucking obvious man she on the nose 
<laughs> it's two on the nose. It's two on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, and she's like holding a razor blade. Yeah. That's her weapon. See, that's what Vito should have done. He should have given him super killer like a razor or something. <laughs> or made him shave one of the bad guys. Calling Ripperson a publisher issue. is entirely accurate. We want to teach you the ropes and help you grow. And maybe at some point in the future, <laughs> you you'll no longer even image. meet the yeah, white girl teaching it. the black guy generic. <laughs> this is how you read. <laughs> Uba <-duba. laughs> Uba. I just came from Africa. Is this English? When do, <laughs> when do I get to rape you? Oh my god. <laughs> and maybe at some point in the future you'll no longer even need Ripasand. that's okay let your wings fly but we're here to help and we want to grow a reliable network of creatives i've literally seen that that stock like graphic mm -hmm. looking for shit on youtube <laughs> and number nine want to grow a reliable network of creatives and projects where customers don't feel like they're playing the lottery if they support a campaign. Let us take the more complicated things off of your hands so you have the time to like go be like great. So if you're an independent like creative, <laughs> creative and Rupa Sand is something that Man, interests you. Money's so complicated. <laughs> Let's just take that off your hands. You don't need that. Yeah, remember that song from that girl? What was her name? Complicated. You know, Avril Lavigne? It is complicated. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't listen to yeah, that gay exactly. shit. No, Till, no, it's not gay to listen to songs that will get you pussy. Understand that? There's a I mean, loophole uh, that you can that you can listen to. <laughs> I don't think someone else's song has ever got me pussy. Ah, uh, sure. All right, so here's a little clip, uh, courtesy of Katie Did Channel. Um, uh, uh, under uh, our publishing wing and Riververse Publishing. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited to build this network. We already have a couple of clients. We had actually that before we ever announced this. Um, so we'll have some announcements with that later. But yeah, this is exciting uh, to see uh, a lot of enthusiastic people. Uh, over this project, man, this is going to be be huge for us, and I, I'm just glad that uh, you know we we were able to make this happen. And this is again, this is going to be kind of. I feel like he's being forced in this. I don't know why. I can't get. I can't shake this. There's nothing really I could point to, other than like maybe the way he's acting. But there's just something about all this that makes me go: Is someone twisting his arm into doing this? Yes, yes, that that is absolutely what's happening. Maybe it's just the fact that he's losing so much money that yeah, they're, they're not going like, to be soluble. I don't yeah, you just like, feel bro, like someone's going, no, what you're going to do is this. You're going to start, you've already got the fucking infrastructure built for this, so you're going to start fucking doing it for other motherfuckers. You're bleeding money. You said you were going to do this. It's flopping for you. Now do it for someone else. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting that feeling. You could be right, M Stone. It could just be money. There's just something that's, there's just something about it's bugging me. Our way he looks to, to me like he's, uh, he's doing his version of the PR, man, like doing the PR, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's going around doing the, uh, the fucking press tour. Every mm -hmm. podcast he gets on, he's gonna fucking talk about it first thing out of his mouth. Um, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah. help, again, uh, our fellow creatives. It's a big step, man. Big step, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just one of those, you, you look at what everything that's going blabs? on in, in, like, in your space, you know. What is I don't a know. Blabs? Why do they leave? How do they reproduce? I don't know, but it, <laughs> the name feels accurate. <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> she Just looks like blabs. a blabs. <laughs> Shut the fuck She's up, so blabs. blabs. No one likes you, blabs. Go away. <laughs> yeah, don't be a blabs, too. From, <laughs> from uh, launching your own your own product, and then you say, well, what's, what's going on? Do I need to take a step to the left or to the right? And, you, and you're still obviously in the same space, but you're... You're, uh, you know, obviously people are really excited. You know, Bruce comes in and says, Ripasend is the future of successful indie yeah. comics and projects. And that's a, that's a big fucking statement. It is. Shout out, Bruce, man. Appreciate you. It, it, look, it, it's Ball it, Laker, my what nigga, we Ball looked Laker, at again. We, we analyze markets. I'm a businessman at the end of the day. So I. I, I... I'm a businessman. <laughs> I'm a businessman. <laughs> you know, I like to do business.
I analyze Mark. He just can't say words like consistently. Like, if he just picked a way to say things wrong, people would be like, hey, all right, it's just the way he says it. It's like he says X. Yeah. If this didn't make sense for, for us or, and it wasn't going to make sense for some other people, then we wouldn't have done this. But after just looking into this more, discussing it more internally, it made a lot of sense. You know, it's a, it's a service that, again, benefits a lot of people uh, in our space, to your point, that it, what, it, what you were speaking mm-hmm. about. Mainly me. Um, and as well, it's something that kind of catches up with the times. Because, yeah, there's, there's publishers, there's all that good stuff that, that's out there. Um, there's plenty of people that are out there that, that are publishing other people's work. But when you look at kind of the 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 archaic old model, like we folk. That's what a blabs is. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. What in the actual fuck? Is, is this a real person? Save, is the people going to save Western culture? Yeah, these are the people going to you know, save us from the the big bad woke Hollywood. Focus more so with we're saying we're going to focus more on direct to customer. Um, uh, like uh, that, those are we're trying to build solutions around that. And really, the industry hasn't even the comic book industry hasn't even caught up uh, to to that really at all because they're still largely using like this direct market uh, uh, setup. Uh, as their kind of mainstay. So, you know, this is something that we, there's a lot of people that are out there doing like crowdfunds and they're, they're absolutely killing it. Uh, and this is a way for, for us to kind of assist those people that just want to uh, have a direct relationship with their customers, build unique experiences for their customers. Um, and we we're just offering our infrastructure to assist them in doing that. You know, I think Man, that's one of the things you see with these, these crowdfunds. Anything at all? Yeah. Anything at all. And he's what he's talking about the, the big companies, the what the fuck he was saying, the, the model, the old model. Dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah, Mar- that, that, you think Marvel is, has, has a points. printing warehouse? Yeah. It thinks Marvel has a printing warehouse with like newspaper boys. Oh, you want a latest latest edition of Spider Man? They, no, they have to. they have they have completely different printing companies. Uh Printing the same comic in different parts of the country, following the same like uh, mm. master guideline or whatever, and yeah, they have they, all they sorts of quality used to do standards. It the other way, probably like maybe twenty years ago. In yeah, the faster way now, especially with internet, you can just send the master file high quality to the to a printer somewhere else and have them print it forever. Off. Since the eighties, they would mm. send the fucking engraved uh, aluminum plates or whatever for the. Yeah, it doesn't know what the fuck it's talking about. No funding campaigns all the time is you see the the people don't equate for the hidden cost associated with it, right? And and so much, oftentimes you see whether it's comics, whether it's gamings, whether it's whatever, you see these uh, these campaigns just go up and smoke. And you say, oh, they made they they did they did a campaign for eight hundred thousand dollars. How are they not wealthy? And it's like, well, because they spent eight hundred thousand dollars on <laughs> you know, or they spent a million dollars on fulfilling the product, yep, you know. Yep. yep. So. Yeah, yeah that, that, I, I, again, it, and and I don't fault I anybody. I think you guys are going to be for... very impressed with me. I made the superhero. Did you? Let's see. In it. like ten minutes. Okay. All right. So she's a ball bitch. Okay. And she look. She has a razor blade on her, and she shaves people's heads. <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Look at this masterpiece. Right. There you go. Are you impressed? Hold on, let me, uh, let me get you full screen on a second. It's cool, she already has AIDS and all that. No, let me oh. say something to us. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, are you guys impressed? Check this out. Look at that. Laura got a razor blade, a bald chick with a razor blade. <laughs> yeah, look, see? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty good. He's gonna shave your ass. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Eric July's fucking shoulder hair and shit. Cringe says he just moves differently, damn it, Till. You don't get it. <laughs> Joe says, does she wax? Yes. <laughs> yes. And she could use those strings, too. Steve G wants you to make her half llama. Or, like, um, not okay. knowing that aspect of it. Because, you know, mm-hmm. you uh, not everybody has been involved in business. And there's and most creative people aren't. I mean, I say this with the music industry that I'm in as well. It's the Question, same thing. It's very similar. Where you have a lot body. of very creative. Oh, 
also there's gonna be there's a horseman mm -hmm. it's gonna be a horsewoman you know we live in 2024 diverse times it's true mm. horsewoman and she needs to be a, a black horsewoman <laughs> Of people, very talented people, but the hiccup uh, is, is kind of some of the business stuff. And um, to be able to again help people and, and, and manage those those sorts of issues so they can be uh, profitable in, in their ventures when they are when they are seeing a level of success. Uh, yes, Professor Grants, <laughs> that's exactly what that is. Um, yeah, it's just this. This is something that will be fulfilling for for myself as well. Um, but it's just something that I think that, that this part of the industry needs and uh, is going to be able to utilize. Well, congratulations on it, man. Rip Ascend, it. it's, it's live. That is, uh, he's just trying his goddamn hardest. Maybe he'll do some uh, good, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think that's going to go very well for him. Because if we, if we've learned anything from these like YouTube creators doing these uh, like comic book campaigns and shit.